organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Thanks for tuning in to your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV, your television, news, sports, and weather source for The Daily Iowan. I am Rachel Burdell, broadcasting from The Daily Iowan Newsroom. Iowa City Police have an arrest warrant out for who they suspect was behind a fatal shooting on the city's west side early Friday morning. 27-year-old Brandon Brown is being charged with first-degree murder in the shooting death of 30-year-old Donnell Lindsay. Brown is described as a black male, 5'9", 170 pounds, with black hair and blue eyes. Brown is considered armed and dangerous, and anyone who has any information in the case is encouraged to contact the Iowa City Police Department. An article published in the Associated Press on Sunday shows that Iowa is amongst the strictest in the country when granting voting rights to felons. Iowa is just one of four states in which the governor has the final say in whether or not to reinstate the voting rights for convicted felons, with the other three states being Florida, Kentucky, and Virginia. Iowa Governor Terry Branstad signed an order as soon as he took office, reversing former Governor Tom Vilsack's policy that reinstates voting rights to felons as soon as they are discharged from state supervision. Since Governor Branstad took office in November 2010, more than 8,000 felons have been released from prison and fewer than 12 have been granted voting rights. And primetime league basketball is in full swing in the Iowa City area. Daily Iowan TV sports reporter Nick Fetty has all the action from Sunday afternoon's 3 o'clock game. After putting up 40 points and 16 rebounds in a three-point loss last week, Aaron White and Culver's Iowa City Ready Mix look to hand its first loss of the season to Vint Merchant's Mike Gaten's Real Estate in Saturday afternoon's primetime league action. The game got off to a bit of a slow start, but both teams were evenly matched for the most part during the first half. Despite being down by as much as 10, Culver's Iowa City Ready Mix got the score to 43-37 going into the half. Sophomore to beat Josh Oglesby had a strong game, putting up 20 points with a perfect field goal, goal percentage during the second half, going 4-4 four for four from behind the arc. An injury on the Portuguese pro Dane Swatella in the first half proved to be fatal for Culver's Iowa City Ready Mix. Uh, Swatella went down, you know, which hurt us. Hurt his ankle. He's a big part of our team. Uh, he's a big guy, pro over in Portugal, I think. Um, and other than that, we didn't get stopped. So, um, you know, kind of a physical game, and got beat up on the glass, and you know, didn't really have an answer for Woodbury. Get an offensive rebound, so um, you know, we'll come back Sunday and get, hopefully get a win. Sioux City native Adam Woodbury had a double double in Sunday afternoon's game, putting up 10 points and 11 boards. However, the incoming freshman acknowledged the help he received from the rest of his team. I mean, I'm, I'm all about the team right now. I'm trying to get acclimated to the system, and we got a great group of guys around me, so I really don't have to do too much. Just uh, kind of go out there and have fun. Despite fighting back from a 10-point deficit in the first half and taking the lead in the second half, it wasn't enough, and Vint Merchant's Mike Gaten's Real Estate came out with a 93-82 win over Culver's Iowa City Ready Mix. Nick Fetty, Daily Iowan TV. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek into Monday's edition of the Daily Iowan. Here's Daily Iowan Metro reporter Allie Brown as she discusses what she's working on for tomorrow. Today I attended the Iowa City Landfill and Recycling Center's first commercial composting workshop at the Environmental Education Center. Uh, Regina High School, Bluebird Diner, New Pioneer Co-op officials all came together and talked about their challenges and successes with their composting programs. A new thing that they're all doing is composting their food waste. For example, Regina High School threw away 130,000 milk bottles a year, plastic bottles, and now they recycle all of those and are composting their lunches. Uh, the university it just received two grants for a food pulper for uh, Hillcrest, which turns it into a pulp that's more easily compostable. And Bluebird Diner is now composting, as of January, composting all of their leftover meals. Uh, I spoke with Jennifer Jordan, the recycling coordinator for the city, about what the response has been and whether businesses are buying into the composting program. The reaction is, is mixed. A lot of people are thinking about doing organics compost or organics collection for composting, uh, but we're still working on figuring out all the logistics and the costs and how we can make it easier for people to do that and to do the right thing and keep those materials, which are valuable resources, out of the landfill. Check out my piece on the front page of the Daily Iowa on Monday. And before we leave, let's take a quick look at the local weather forecast. Expect fairly mild conditions during the day Monday as we'll see sunny skies and a high near 78 
with a slight breeze. Monday night should remain clear and it looks to cool down to about 55 degrees. Mm -hmm. Looking ahead, expect temps to warm up as we make our way to the weekend and there's a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms beginning Thursday night and carrying through Saturday. That's your latest update from Daily Iowan TV. You can check us out anytime at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.